the biggest question we're receiving right now as agents is now the right time to buy a home. We've got the answers from David Childers, the president with Keeping Current Matters. You're not going to want to miss this one. All right, David, this is something that I'm really excited to uh, really to share with everybody. You know, as you and I spent a little bit of time last week together yeah. for a couple of days, you were sharing about this big question of is now a good time to buy a house? And I think yeah. it's so critically important and timely for so many agents out there that I would love just to kind of turn this over to you a little bit and say, hey, what does that question look like? And are there different phases to that question? Maybe that you yeah. Jimmy, I, I appreciate you asking that. And, you know, we had a chance to spend time together and had some chance to, to talk to other agents about this. And I think this is the biggest question right now that people are being asked is, should I buy a home? Uh, and, uh, you know, seeing the rise in interest rates, seeing, you know, this, uh, a lot of news about prices, what's going to happen there. I think folks have questions here. And, and if we don't answer that question well, I think we lose credibility. And, and I think ultimately, People go, I don't know. So how do you answer that well? Now, I, I want to say a couple of things before I hop into this. One, the decision to buy a home is an extremely personal decision for anyone, right? We're going to talk about a very logical way to talk about this, but we're, we're bringing logic to an emotional situation. So I just want to say that I think we have to understand what's driving people uh, to buy in the first place or potentially buy. And what we want to do, I, I believe, is be the educator, not try to convince somebody to do something they don't want to do. But if we start with that as a premise, here's what I would say. There's two things everybody should understand or ask themselves if I'm thinking about buying. If you and I were sitting down right now, Jimmy, and you were thinking about buying, I would say this. What do you believe about interest rates and what do you believe about prices? That's really what you want to start to look at. And, you know, right now, if you just look at the news, I believe a lot of people, one, are getting an inflated view of what's happening, sort of a sensationalized view and, and not getting the truth. And I think there are some things that in the truth of that that we need to talk about. So if we take that concept and start with what do we believe about interest rates, I want to give you just a short little um, sort of perspective on interest rates from what we compile here at Keeping Current Matters to, you know, to give agents the visuals, number one, but the perspective to have that conversation. Okay. So if you're, you're okay with that, I'll share a couple of slides and we'll walk through that. We'll take just a couple of minutes and, and, and look at this. So let me share right here. This is what I, I call Jimmy defining reality in our business. This is a look at the average 30 year fix going all the way back to the first week in January. And, and, you know, I'm not telling anybody uh, anything they don't know right now, but since the first week of this year, rates have shot up. It's been the fastest rise in interest rates in 50 years. That's added about a thousand dollars on average to the average mortgage payment across the country. Now, why is that reality? Anybody that I want to sit down with, I want to, I want to show them that. And say, okay, this is what's happened to the business. This is what sort of put the brakes on real estate. This is what's causing people to go, should I buy right now? Okay. Now, what is my perspective? You know, I always want to be a part of a relevant market perspective that's based upon fact, not based upon what somebody maybe said or what I heard, but what are experts saying about interest rates? And I think there are a couple of things that you want to pay attention to as you help guide people in the process. First one that, that uh, experts are saying right now, Mark Fleming said this, mortgage rates, he says, while mortgage rates are expected to continue to drift higher over the coming months, most of the rapid increase in rates is likely behind us. And let's hope that Mark is right on that, that the, you know, the rapid increase is behind us. But he says nationally, while month over month house prices may decline, annual house price declines are not expected. And we'll talk about those that say they are, um, given the ongoing supply demand imbalance and continue to strengthen the labor market. So the quick answer to this, Jimmy, is in the short term, experts are forecasting rates to go a little bit higher. Why is that? It's all about inflation right now. It's about the fight against inflation that the Fed is making. That's what's driven rates higher. Fed doesn't control mortgage rates. They can only hope to influence them, and they've influenced them higher. 
as they continue to do their work and try to fight inflation, what you're going to hear, and you're already hearing it, is recession, you know, the calls for recession to sort of get higher and higher, sort of a fever pitch in uh, experts saying we're going to be in a recession in this country if the Fed continues to do what they do. And oh, by the way, that's happening. You look at the Wall Street Journal, they just released this uh, here in October, 63% of experts say we will be in a recession in the next 12 months. All right. So I can sort of paint this picture now. Increase in rates. Experts expect them to go a little bit higher. It's all about inflation. Oh, by the way, that's likely driving us in this country toward a recession. Now, the question you want to ask yourself always is, okay, what would that mean for housing? What would that mean for mortgage rates? Well, if you go back, you go back all the way to the 80s, a recession has meant falling mortgage rates every single time. And I wouldn't expect anything different this time as well. And you can go find a lot of commentary on that. The question is timing. Nobody has a crystal ball right now. Nobody knows what that looks like. I'm going to pull the, the slides down for just a minute. But that's the logical path that I want to help someone understand and say, okay, why are you moving? What is your time frame? And do you want to wait until rates you know, drop? Um, we, we can have that conversation as well. But that's the relevant market opinion based upon fact relative to the first part of that question, what do I believe about interest rates? Hey, David, you, you made a good point, too. When people are saying that, hey, I'm going to wait till interest rates come right. down. One of the points you made was, you know, that, hey, that might be something everybody's thinking about. You want to speak to that a little bit, too? When yeah. We're well, I, I think that's a common response, right? If uh, I'm going to wait till rates go down. Well, my question back to that, what do you think everybody else is going to do? Right. Right. I think, I think everybody else is thinking that as well. What are we at a time right now? You know, in real estate, the biggest challenge of the last two years is that people felt like it was impossible to buy a home, whether they were beat out in a multiple offer scenario. Maybe they were going FHA or VA and couldn't uh, you know, beat an all cash offer or a significantly better offer. What do we know? Inventory is rising. We definitely know that. And it's much harder to buy a home. But if you truly do believe that, I believe today you have the selection, you have the opportunity, and you can refinance down the road. Now, I think there's a lot of conversation about, well, just buy it and you can refinance it. I'm not suggesting that. You have to qualify and you shouldn't buy outside of your means. And, oh, by the way, hopefully the mortgage process won't let you do that. But you you have to look at that and say, okay, what do you believe everybody else would do? But I think that's an element of it and say, okay, let's take that into consideration when we're making this, you know, this decision. Right. Everything being personal, obviously being with different goals. We understand that. But this is equipping us with those that ability to answer those questions, as you said, with a relevant, um, fact-based uh, yeah. understanding of what your beliefs are. Well, the, and the key is there what you just said, fact-based. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of opinions in our business. Very few of them are based upon fact. Right. So the, yeah. one of the best questions you can always ask somebody in, whether it's about pricing or anything they believe is, tell me why you believe that. It's disarming versus I have to fight you or convince you of what I believe or what I know to be true. Tell me why you believe that. And the next question I would, I would uh, or next statement I would use is, would you mind if I shared some information with you? I just want to share it with you. Yeah, it's really good. Really good. All right, let's shift now from interest rates. Let's talk about pricing because this is the next question. You know, is now a good time or I'm going to wait until yep. I see prices come down? How, how, would you, uh, how would you answer those questions? Well, I think you have to look at then, okay, what do you believe about prices? Okay. And this is an area right now where um, I think the biggest challenge in real estate, but in the world today is the news does not do an accurate job of educating people. And I'm not on some kind of political rant on that, which I do believe we could get on, but um, the job of the news today is to get you to watch more news. That's the job. OK, it's not to give you the information you need to make a wise decision. It's to draw you into a storyline to get you to come back for more. OK, and so oftentimes the sensationalized headlines could actually be factually correct, but very, very misleading. So, OK, what, what do we believe about prices? There's another piece that I'm going to take you through a couple of slides, just like I just did on prices to, to form your relevant market opinion. The other thing that I think we have to acknowledge in our business is while there are stark differences between today and the housing crisis of 2008, 
um, people that aren't in our business go, it feels a lot like 2008. And if we're honest with ourselves, we need to go, it kind of does. It, it, you know, we had this run up in the market, this frenzy in the market, and now interest rates have adjusted. Now there are massive differences in loan products that were in the market and a lot of different things that, that make today different. But if we look at that, I think that's a valid question any consumer would want to want to ask. So what, how do you develop that opinion? You have to look at what experts are saying. So let me give you a little bit of perspective on that. I'll start out here uh, with a quote that I think sort of anchors us in the right place. Taylor Marr from Redfin. For those bearish folks eagerly awaiting home prices to crash, you'll have to keep waiting. As much as demand is pulling back, supply is as well, reducing downward pressure on prices in the short run. So what Taylor's saying here is, you know, no doubt that rise in interest rates is causing demand to pull back. People going, we're going to wait, we're, we're not going to do this. But also they're not listing their homes. We're not seeing this flood of inventory coming to the market, which is keeping um, or reducing that downward pressure on prices. OK, so I think that's the first piece that, that you have to understand. It's also it's very Hard right now, I believe, for to find a reputable forecaster saying the market is going to crash. There are definitely people calling for depreciation, but but nobody calling for this massive you know crash. Those that are generally, Jimmy, you know this. I always say this: they have something to help you get through the storm. They have a book or a conference that they want to sell you that's going to help you. And I think you have to understand that. But if we look at the latest projections for prices. This is it from MBA to home price expectation survey to NAR to Fannie to Zellman. And overall, if you were to have to pin me down on this to say, okay, look, anywhere from 4% depreciation to almost 3% appreciation, we're probably in a very even year next year. You're going to see some markets that have slight depreciation, some markets that have slight appreciation, no doubt what happens in one market where you're at, Jimmy, may not be where I'm at and vice versa uh, in other places. But but I think this is where we bring our local market expertise in right. to the picture. Okay. Now, I, I think some things are, are getting very, very clear about the real estate market. One, some folks are calling for depreciation going into next year. I don't think we should shy away from that. Okay. Two, most of the, the forecasts that uh, you know are out there call for that in uh, 2023 and then appreciation in 2024. This is something I would remind people, uh, you know, during the global financial crisis, prices depreciated for five years. And Jimmy, I don't see anybody calling for that or anywhere near that, calling for this market that I've, I've said, you know, next year is probably an even market nationally. Some seeing slight depreciation, some seeing slight appreciation. Are there some hotter markets that we'll see, I'm going to pull this down real quick, that, that we'll see uh, more depreciation than others? Sure, there are. I'm not saying everything's going to be equal there. But okay, now that I have, here's what I believe about our market and prices. Here's what I believe about interest rates. Jimmy, I can help you make the wisest decision. We can look at that. Oh, by the way, you know, I've got this graphic I can show you if you want me to. What's the alternative? The alternative is renting. If you don't know right now what a two or three bedroom apartment rents for in the, in the town that you're in right now, I mean, not like I kind of know, like I would call up and say, we're thinking about renting an apartment. What are you getting for a two bedroom or a three bedroom? And if they even have one, like what, what are you asking for it? And understanding that, because that's the alternative. The alternative is to go, unless you have a family member that you're going to live with rent free, like, well, why don't you do that for the rest of your life? And then those people are really like, we really need to buy a house. You know what I mean? Right. So right. they're trying to get out of there. Um, yeah. But but no doubt, those are the things we have to consider. Why am I buying? What do I believe about prices? And oh, by the way, what's the alternative? What's going to be the cost on that? If I can have a good picture of that, I can sit down with somebody. I can help them make a wise decision. It's what I, you and I were talking about our, our kids a little bit ago. It's what I would want somebody doing with my son. Right. right. What do you plan on doing? Okay, let's help you make the wisest decision. And right now we need to be okay. There may be some, some situations where folks say, you know what? It does make more sense for you to wait. All right. Yeah. Let's help yeah. you wait. Let's help you buy when you're ready. I don't believe for for most folks that's going to be the case, um, and, and we can get into that as well. But but I think 
sort of that element and, and bring the personal humanization to it is, is what we have to do. Yeah, that's really good. I, David, I, I, while you're on, while you mentioned rentals, this is such a, I, I thought this was such a great point where you um, were talking about um, a couple of days ago about how the real crisis in sure. the real estate uh, market is in rentals. You want to speak to that just briefly? And I, I don't know if you've got a slide on that or anything, because it, yeah. it was it was really when you showed that slide, it just was such a visual understanding of what what we're really the alternatives are right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me show that slide. I actually have it uh, up here uh, and I'll, I'll share it real quick. So this is a look at median asking rent since 1988. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you look at rent over time, going all the way back to 1988, they've skyrocketed. In the last couple of years, rents have skyrocketed. Okay. And you can grab this slide at Keeping Current Matters, Jimmy. I'll give them uh, to you. You know, we can, get, we can get them out to folks, but but I would help people see that. Let me, let me pull this slide down real quick um, and, and tell you about this. Why is that so important? It's important for a couple of reasons. First, let me back up and say this. One of the questions we get at Keeping Current Matters is what is Wall Street's participation in residential real estate across the country. Are investors coming into markets and snapping up every home? I will tell you, they are in the market, they are growing. It's not to the extent that most people believe, but there's a bigger question that I always wanna help plant in people's minds. Why do you think they're doing it? They know housing is a great investment. That's why they're doing it. They, they know housing is a great investment. Second thing, the rise in rents. The crisis in this country is in the rising rental market because a renter that's paying, I'm going to call it through the nose, for a two-bedroom or three-bedroom apartment can't save for a down payment. Right. The, one of the biggest misconceptions in real estate is it takes 20% to buy a home. Now, Jimmy, we know that's not true, but most folks don't know that. Right. You know, so especially, you know, you look at an FHA product, look at a VA product, you know, I mean, and VA benefit. I'm fully, if you fought for this country and you picked up a gun and did that, I, I support you and that you should get that benefit. And I wish more people would, would use it and, and can, but you don't have to have 20% to buy a home. Mm -hmm. right. You know, I was on a podcast um, a couple of weeks ago with some investors and they said the biggest uh, lesson they learned in real estate is they're like, you know, we don't we don't haggle over price. We don't spend a lot of time on that. And I'm not saying people shouldn't pay attention to price. They should. But we focus on getting the property because they they're playing a different game. That's right. They know that 10, 20, 30 years down the road in that um, uh, home or in that investment or in that piece of property, they win. Right. That's the bottom line. If you buy it today for seven percent interest rate and you can refinance it a, a year from now down to five or whatever it is you win over time. There will come a day when you look back 10 years from now, 20 years, and you say, you believe we bought it then? We, we were wondering if we should even done it. It was the best decision of our lives. Hey, David, That's the reality. Great, it's yeah, a reality. This is, this is a great point um, also. And, and we're going to shift in just a second out of the financial aspects of home ownership yeah. to the non. But um, I, I've, I've looked at these numbers and we're, when we're looking at our marketplace, and if you were to buy at the very peak of 2007, which was our local market peak yeah. in pricing, yeah. Uh, we were at an average sales price, and I'm using the coastal market, so this is not the norm, but it, it applies to all markets. We were at about a million four on the on the coastal market beach property at that time in this luxury type market. We went through the downturn. You got to understand prices in luxury markets sometimes in our area at that time we kind of went up faster and we pulled back faster in sure. that extreme situation back then. Here we are today. If you'd have bought at the very peak. Now, here we are. If you've got the long term perspective, now it's two point one million um, on average right now. And you would have faced the biggest downturn in pricing that we saw historically through that five year period you were just talking about. So yeah. um, I couldn't agree more. Obviously, it is understanding what is your ultimate goal and what is the time frame. The reason why those investors are so interested is because they're not playing the short game. Totally. They're playing that long game and they understand that those things, especially when you see the rental numbers, when you're locking in, those rental numbers are continuing. That return just continues to grow as you see those trends continue. Let's get let's get back to the you know we've answered the question on you know I'm going to wait until interest rates go down. Yeah. We talked about I'm going to wait until prices go down. Those questions that we're hearing from people. Let's talk a little more because those are specifically financial aspects yeah. of buying yeah. home. You mentioned at the beginning 
you know, we're, we're trying to bring something that is an emotional decision into something that is not. Let's talk about those emotional and the long term benefits of that home ownership, if you don't mind. Yeah, I think that is the question today is is helping people understand that. And, and probably one of the things that we got too used to in 2020 and 2021, even this year in 2022, is the extreme appreciation in homes. Like, hey, you know, we can buy it this month. It's going to be worth more next month. If we need to sell it, we can sell it. We still make some money. And that's not a normal market. Mm-hmm. That's what we have to understand. It's not a normal market. And we're heading into a market that's very, uh, you, know, you know, very much normal from an uh, um, appreciation standpoint. When you talk about why people buy homes, I believe Home ownership and the decision to buy a home, one is extremely personal. Second is driven by life um, events. We're having a baby. I got a new job. I'm, you know, my parents are moving in with me. Whatever the case may be, that's what drives the decision. So I think we have to understand, okay, Mr. Miss Potential Buyer, why are you making this decision? Okay, if I can understand that and I can sit with them and, and I can get that, then I can then help them make the wisest decision um, for, for they and their family. The, the other thing is, you know, studies come out all the time. You can go to NAR and you can find these home ownership, you know, value of home ownership studies. Folks that, that say owning a home makes them feel more secure. Owning a home makes them feel uh, more in charge of, you know, their, their space. You can't do to a home, which you, you, know, you can't do to an apartment, which you can do to a home. All the things that we know about home ownership are true. And, and oh, by the way, one of the things that's most fascinating to me is back in um, 2008 in the in the financial crisis, mortgage meltdown, whatever you want to call it, Great Recession, um, people sort of came out of that and uh, they were like, I'm not sure owning a home is the American dream. I'm not sure that people should buy a home, you know, all these questions. Well, what we just saw in the pandemic is one thing people said for sure is I want to own a home. I want my spot for myself and my family if this were to ever happen again. And listen, I hope it never happens again. I hope we never see anything like that in our lifetime. But if it were to, people resoundingly said, we want our spot. And and I think we have to look at that and not forget that, that homeownership is so much more. Maybe in our business sometimes, you know, we talk a lot about units and prices and what it is. And at the end of the day, it's about the American dream. It's about home ownership. Oh, by the way, the overwhelming majority of people in this country that have been able to build wealth have done that through home ownership. The numbers are shocking. You know, it is the number one wealth creator for people in this country. So one thing that makes this country so unique is you can own a home and you can build equity in that home and, and you can down the road use that to you know, retire comfortably, send a kid to school, start a business, all the stories that we know about just the innovation and the the wonderful things about this country. And I think we have to get back to that versus, hey, if we buy this this year, you think, you know, if we sold a couple of years, we can move up and make $100,000 or whatever it is and really understand what's driving this decision. Yeah, David. This is good stuff, man. I really appreciate this. Um, This is the value that I think that um, Keeping Current Matters brings to the marketplace. Um, As we close, um, if you don't mind, speak to that value of agents today needing, not just wanting, but they should, they need and they have to have that relevant understanding fact-based perspective on the, on their local market, if you don't mind. Yeah. Yeah. And no, I appreciate that, Jimmy. I'm gr- grateful for uh, those words. You know, I, here's what I would say. If you came into my office here, our office at KCM in Richmond, Virginia, we have a big wall that says, we believe every family should feel confident when buying and selling a home. Mm, so good. And that's what drives us every day. And here's what I would say to, to the agent, go check keeping current matters out. I mean, we it starts $29 a month. If you figure out it's not right for you, then that, that's okay. But for agents across the country, we want them to know that we have their back. We have their back with this is what you need to know. This is how you need to answer the questions so that you can create credibility in this market so that you can say, I am the expert. I'm going to bring to you what you need to know. And that's what drives everything we do at Keeping Current Matters. Yeah, David, you're the best, my friend. Um, Listen, I know you guys got some value out of this. Make sure you let David know how much you appreciate it. Um, Again, if you're serious about your real estate business, um, you should have Keeping Current Matters as a part of your portfolio 
information that's coming in and that you're utilizing to add value into the marketplace. David, again, thank you. And uh, we will talk to you guys soon. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks for watching the video. I specifically chose the video below for you because it builds on the one you just watched. I hope it's helpful and I'll talk to you soon.